So, morning guys, and uh, welcome back to uh, another vlog. Today, I'm just gonna go up the wood. I haven't shown you the wood for a while. Yeah, I'm just gonna give you an update on what I've been doing really and the work that we've done with gates and ponds and things and just give you a bit of a look through at some of my future aspirations and projects. And uh, yeah, quite a lot's been done actually. It's nice now just to leave it for nature, just to reclaim and do its thing, but uh, whew, a bit of a hill to start off with. So guys, it feels a bit, looks a bit messy at the moment, but um, this area here is a nice bank that I'm gonna create, put loads of um, palm plants and native species plants in there. Um, this area has been flattened out. That was the access for the digger to get in. And this is kind of like a boggy area where my dog is. There's still a little bit of water leaching through there, so it creates a nice boggy area for a nice bit of a um, spot for a lot of bog plants. And then we move over here. I'm gonna create a little boardwalk across here where my dog's about to go. Oh boy. And there you can see is one of the lower little tiny pool. And there you've got a uh, overflow pipe from a little pond at the top. And this is natural spring water that's leaching through the bank. Uh, and this is another one here, another little pond there. Lovely, clear, fresh water. So really, really nice. Um, quite a lot of work done in here. Um, appears messy at the moment, but it will get better as time goes on. Um, little path cutting up there. The digger got in again. And moving on up the main track here to the, our uh, eastern boundary of, of the woodland. Um, with a nice little four foot gate there. And a fence <clears throat> all the way down the bottom. So, nice little gate and a fence all the way down. Lovely. So I've had to put a few signs up. I'm not trying to you know, be too aggressive with the signs, but we need these for um, for our insurance reasons, for liabilities insurance. So just private land, no public access or right of way, which there isn't. So just walking down to the main pond, it's quite exciting actually. Um, this is a top track now going through. And that's the main pond, which is filling up nicely. Um, here, this is a load of old rubble that was basically piled up from the field when it used to be used for crop. All the stone was piled in this corner, a big heap, and they dragged some of that down and then put that here. Um, so I can get the land in through the field gate there. There's a 12 foot gate. And this is down to the pond area. So this originally was a pond and the digger came in and dug it out. It was full of silt, sediment, bog, sticks, you name it. And this was all closed in in here. And the idea is, is to leave the ash trees here and take some of these sycamore out, let a bit more light in for the wildlife. But it's gonna be great once I plant it up a little bit and let nature take its course. Also, you can see it's great for animals to drink in, including dogs. My dog Maya there, she loves the water. So this is all coming out of the bank over there. It's a natural spring that comes through and there's springs everywhere in this part of the woodland. And, and to be honest, that's the only area there's water in here. So really lucky. It's right on the edge of my boundary. Um, and it's a great damp, boggy area, which is great for a lot of other bird species. And we're hopefully gonna attract marsh tit in here. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna think about putting a hide in here at some point as well. But all this silt here was dragged out from here, dug out, and then let it naturally fill. So uh, yeah, really, really good. Bit of a mess at the minute, granted, but Obviously you needed to do that for, to get it to start to, you know, come together as I want it. I'm gonna put a hide over here as well, hopefully, and that'll look in onto the, uh, onto the ponds and the two lower ones there. Great for, great for dragonflies and, and lots of other insect species, birds to drink and mammals to drink, you know, for this whole woodland in here. So the entire woodland is kind of like 50 acres and there's only a stream at one end, so, this is the only water source in all of that area. So it's gonna be awesome for the wildlife to come in. And already you can see there, 
there's quite a lot of birds have been perched on there um, coming in here for water and I've seen deer slots as well um, pull that big stump out as well and all that stuff over there it was really really um, clogged up so hopefully the level will come quite high all the way around and there's a little beachy area there and everything will start to spring back yellow flag irises um, pendulous sedge loads and loads of native stuff um, and then probably get some some sort of safe pond weed to go in there as well and the things to hide and a few grasses and stuff but um yeah really exciting um looking forward to it to all develop um time i get back from canada after four years this is going to be um yeah it's going to be pretty awesome and uh, provide so much habitat for uh, for wildlife so this is the eastern gate there i've just had to put a new lock on it the lock was faulty and 15 cattle got in and tramped the hell out of the um, pond area, which was disappointing. Um, little gap through there to go onto the path. What we're doing in here is digging this out a bit and we're gonna have a hide facing into the field. And I'm gonna have maybe, we'll see winter time, autumn, winter, when the uh, food supply is a little short is supplement a bit of roadkill feeding maybe for some of the local raptor species. Um, so be a nice addition. We've got a nice bit of canopy over here to keep some of the light out because this is south at the minute. Um, that'll be an idea. Just got to check with the farmer if he's happy me putting something in there, an old stump or something. So um, we'll see. But uh, yeah, no, all coming together nicely now. We'll just take a walk on through the rest. So I've still got loads of work to do in here, but I'm um, reluctant to do too much at the moment because of the, just at the tail end of the breeding for bird species. We've done really well in here with all the 40 odd boxes we've had. Um, the flycatcher boxes, which are dotted around here, haven't had anything in. We've had no flycatchers breed, but it was a bit of a long shot um, straight away. But through the 40 odd boxes we've got, and I had about 38 tip boxes, and at least 22 of those were blue tit. At least sort of four or five were great tit and one coal tit. So, you know, the boxes were occupied um, kind of 80%. So really, really pleased. Uh, we've had breeding black cap, chiff chaff, tree creeper, nuthatch, uh, buzzards, sparrowhawk, uh, carrion crow, dunnock, blackbird, song thrush, missile thrush. I mean, there's loads in here. So it's been really good. Um, oh, massive smell of fox. Whew. Really strong smell. So yeah, reluctant to do anything at the moment. I'll probably leave it for another month and then I'll get in here and start working on the paths again and more hides as well. Now I wasn't gonna do too much with the hides because of going to Canada next year, but I've decided to make a lot of the hides out of natural materials, use some of the small conifers that I'm taking out as posts, getting some roofing material and then setting up some hides. And we'll just trek on down there now and have a look. Awful lot of sign there of um, badgers digging up around here. Obviously this is being the set here, but there's holes everywhere, um, digging up. Dogs are loving it, smelling the badger. But yeah, I've been digging up holes there all around here, really, really marking territory here. This area is well and truly worn away, digging around these little parts here. So I didn't get any luck on the badger cubs either, um, but we'll move on to that in a moment. I'm just gonna walk down, check out the buzzard's nest. I'll tell you a bit about the buzzard, which is quite exciting. So guys, here we are. This uh, hide's been here for months now. And just over there is uh, the buzzard's nest, which has been used, as I said before, for like generations. And I can see the buzzard from here. And what I do most mornings is I walk down to the hide, just to this point. If I were to walk in any closer, I'd probably upset the buzzard a bit, especially if the parents are coming in feeding. So I always shoot down this way and leave it be. So that's the sort of standard track in the morning. So the buzzer gets used to that. Now, I thought there was two young on there, but there's only one single young buzzard, um, really healthy, getting well fed. And I'll just show you next, just a couple images I shot the other day and a bit of video of the uh, adult birds feeding 
the uh, young buzzard, but it's fantastic to get in here just to observe them. They know the hide's been there a long time. They don't really think much of it. Poke the lens out the front, job done. And they brought in all sorts, voles, birds, frog, the other day, um, feeding them away. But uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy that footage, just a little bit of the adult birds. But um, yeah, it's fantastic, really good to see. And um, hopefully, long may they always breed in here. Um, and I'm gonna put a hide here as well. There's quite a flat area. And because they've been using it so long, it's safe to say that I think they're gonna use this nest probably. They do generally have two or three nests in territory and they may swap around year by year, but nine times out of 10, if that nest stays where it is, they'll use that probably every now and then, every couple of years, maybe every year. And they'll have a, a permanent hide in situ here so we can observe the buzzards um, each breeding season. So yeah, great stuff. So it was lovely to check out the buzzard there. And we've got a sparrowhawk in here as well, but I don't know where the nest is. Um, I've not really spent stacks of time in here, really. I'm walking it daily, but just with the dogs, quick 40 minute walk. So it's a bit of a snapshot. You really need to sort of come in here, stay in here, and then you can start to feel what's going on around you rather than just a quick walk through. Um, just sit, relax, listen. But we've had quite a lot of roe deer in here still. Um, I've been in quite a few mornings and they've been hiding away and hoping that the dogs don't pick up the scent. Um, but yeah, so they're still active in here. So we've got foxes and we had fox cubs this year, but we only had one cub. Um, and I'll just show you quickly on the trail cam uh, footage of the uh, fox cub, very, very young. So I'll just flip that off the screen. I've got a bit of footage in the daylight with the adult fox, um, which is the vixen and the young. I don't know why there was only one. Bit of a shame don't know what happened there but one's better than none so they actually um, the den is just up there and I thought that was the badgers but I've seen badgers in there and foxes so badgers do team up next door to foxes and they seem to just tolerate each other so um, excuse the plane going over um, but that's really good news badgers not sure now I need to come up here next week and I'm gonna do a, a few evening sessions and see if I can pick out um, how many badger badgers there were um, the set is just further along because there's two sets. They've used this, it's called a, I think it's an Outlander set. And they've got another one, the main set further along there. And I'm hoping where well, I just showed you the, um, the poo and the scrapings and a lot of leather treens. So uh, I was alive in here this morning, black cat just singing over there. And I'm gonna do a bit of a session with the badgers, hoping maybe to bait them up with some peanuts and peanut butter and hopefully see if we can get um, to see how many young, um, Badger cubs there are, so um, yeah, be great though. It's nice to know though that we've got the deer, got the badgers, got the foxes, you know, all these bird species in here. It's really gone down well this year. Um, and hopefully year on year, that will improve um, as we go. But um, yeah, onwards. So you guys, this is where I intend on having the hide, just in here. So this area in here, we'll have a hide. And this will be the area that I'll have a feeding station set up. So the idea is, is to clear some of the overhanging holly, some of the ivy out at uh, just above that fallen oak here, which is actually still alive because it's still partially rooted. So it's to have that and put nuts, raisins, peanut butter and get stoats, 
badgers and foxes to go along there. Maybe not the badger, but certainly fox and stoat can go along there and obviously put some in behind so you can't see and hopefully get some nice shots as well of um, some of the woodland mammals. And um, put lots of feeders in here, so for autumn, winter. Um, and that's the idea really. I was originally gonna put it up there near the field edge, but decided to go here. South is there, so east is there. So I thought it'd be a perfect spot as the light goes round, casting a bit of side lighting and then a bit of back lighting um, come the evening when it heads and sets in the west. It doesn't look much at the minute, but hopefully it'll take shape and uh, the hide will be there. Nice little roof on it, nice and camouflaged. And I'll be able to also get the badgers and foxes moving along the outer edge there. Um, and that's the plan for that. But uh, yeah, no, quite excited. I need to get work on that very soon, but the black caps have been breeding in here. So uh, I've not wanted to disturb them until they've completely finished. And then I'll crack on and, and get to work. Don't know if you can hear this on camera, but we've got Goldcrest singing away. I forgot to mention, that's my dog yawning. There we go, beautiful. I don't know if the mic on the GoPro is going to pick it up, but we've got Firecrest and Goldcrest in here breeding. Such amazing birds. They love the coniferous part. That's one thing, it's really good to have this section where you've got more coniferous and you've got more deciduous. Um, so you've got a nice mixed habitat there. Um, but it's just beautiful. Lovely. Monty, come on, let's go. Good boy. Go on. So guys, just want to give you a bit of an update with the patron side of things. Um, I think now we're up to 19 um, people so far who've signed up to patron. And I'm absolutely, you have to excuse my dogs, by the way. It's playtime and uh, they're being a bit noisy. Um, but I had 20, but now I've got 19. And I just wanted to say to you, you know, thank you so much for all your support. It really does make a difference. Having that patron support um, allows me to do what I do, content create, um, projects, etc. Everything goes back into the woodland generally as well for boxes, for fencing, for hides, nails, pins, you name it. Um, it all helps and all goes into my photography. So thank you so much. And also I wanted to say that, you know, I know many of you won't feel pressured, but don't feel pressured that if you don't want to stay, you know, every month, if you want to leave, come back, entirely up to you. The patron allows you to do that. You don't have to commit to anything one month, have a break, come back. But if you want to keep going with it, marvelous. Absolutely love it. You know, it's, um, it's a huge support for me and it's great to know you're all there. Now I've been uh, a little bit quiet lately on the patron side of things because of the fact that I've been so busy you know, spring, early summer. It's chock a blockers for wildlife photography. Um, I've got workshops, I've been on assignments in Scotland, um, magazine deadlines, competitions, all these sort of things. So, you know, I've got loads more coming, especially with the woodland and uh, loads of projects um, coming up, which I want to share with you as well. And also to start to do some Q and A and um, also some other projects that I have where I want to do a bit of um, live chat as well from me tutorial based stuff which is all going to come and it'll probably settle in a little bit in the autumn with that as well because it's just so busy at the moment but I, I keep trying to put out a few pictures and posts and this obviously video as well with the woodland update for you guys just to see what I've been up to and uh, also where some of your money is going um, to help bring this woodland on but uh, yeah thanks again for all your continued support um, couldn't do it without you so thank you This is at the west end, the very end. And this is originally where I said I was gonna put the gate. There's the field gate there. So I can drive the landy in all the way along here. That's the animal track going down there. And this has been leveled out um, and compacted down a little bit. It's a little bit bumpy in places, but I've been camping up here in the landy with the roof tent. And eventually we'll have a little forester's cabin in here. At this end, I'll we'll have solar out into the field, south facing. And uh, yeah, having a nice aspect, looking all the way through the woodland there. Beautiful. So yeah, really, really pleased. Came in here, saved all the bluebells too, picked them all out by hand, replanted them, 
and obviously pulled some of the bluebells, the topsoil off and planted it all the way along the edge here. So we're gonna have a nice bluebell bank. There's a lot of stone in there, needs a bit of tidying up, but uh, all in good time really. But uh, yeah, no, really pleased. It's gonna be a nice addition to have the cabin, Forester's hut, and also take shelter when I'm doing workshops and things. Um, go in there for a brew, have a wood burner and stuff like that. Hopefully all being well in making sure I'm gonna do things in accordance with planning and things. Yeah, and here's the field gate. Lovely, and we get deer coming in here at night. So another hide maybe along the way there, out into the field to capture deer and things moving through. But um, there we have it guys, quite a long update actually. It's, um, it's been a while since I've done one and um, done quite a bit, still lots more to do. Um, forever evolving thing really. If anybody's got any ideas about what they think I should do or any, uh, any added things, one thing I forgot to mention, I'm gonna do a reflection pool as well, have some water up this end and see if I can naturally feed that. Um, um, some water in from a catchment and then so that I can then top the water up and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, no, it's great um, to, to be here now just to show you my plans. I'm gonna do as much as I can before we head off to Canada. But uh, thanks guys as always and for your um, continued support as well on the channel. Um, it really, you know, does make a huge difference. This is probably not for everybody. Not everybody wants to see me walking around my woodland, but you know, for those that you are interested and those, those of you who have got woodland of your own, look after woodlands for people. You've got loads of ideas, especially a friend of mine, Keith, who I met up near Fort William, who took me to his site with the Pine Martins. Uh, he's done a fabulous job there. Absolutely superb. Got it rigged up to death with cameras. Uh, so nothing can get in there without him knowing, but he's got Pine Martins in there. Um, Kit soon as well. He's got birds of prey um, coming through woodpeckers, tree creepers, red squirrel, you know, fantastic. So uh, yeah, some, um, some really good ideas from him and also anybody else has got any ideas, it's nice just to, to share those as well um, equally. But uh, thanks again guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.